Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Juan Pablo Di Pache. And we're here to illustrate how to use LEDs to do portrait lighting. You'll want to check out our new stop motion download, two and a half hours of tips and techniques from Trisha Zemp. You'll love the things she talks about, a tasty video, the B&H logo. Go to thuslinelens.com where you can download yours today. So we're on set now with Juan Pablo and we're going to do some fabulous portraits in that kind of era of 1920s. Why do we choose 1920s? Because of Rudolf Valentino and also I love the 20s because tango was created in sort of the 20s in Buenos Aires and he was a, a dancer too so it kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's an era that I absolutely love. It's a wonderful photographic era because yes. the images are just so beautiful. They're stark, they're black and white. They use very hard light, yeah. and so we're going to try to recreate that with LEDs here Smoky today. Smoky and mysterious. Smoke, all those kinds of things. We Absolutely. love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, but our goal is to show how you can use LEDs and what the advantages, pros and cons of LEDs in doing this kind of portrait lighting. Why do you choose them? Why would you choose them over strobes? And how are they going to be an advantage to us here on set? So let's get started and see what we can do. Let's do it. So here are the reasons that I choose LEDs when I'm doing portraits. Number one is you see exactly what you get. When you dial light up, you're seeing it. It's right on the monitor. As you're looking through the viewfinder, it is much easier to use LEDs, continuous light, to be able to see the lighting, to be able to see the ratios, and to be able to actually have an example that's changing right before your eyes. It's a much easier way to work. One of the important ones is that if you're shooting film, you've got to shoot continuous light because now I can shoot some stills, I can immediately go to a film mode, and I can do some video mode and shoot some video. So it makes it very easy for me to go back and forth between stills and video on the same setup. That's a really important one. If you're going to do both those at the same time, using and understanding and being able to work with continuous light is really important. You also have complete control of your color temperature. You can dial that color te temperature up and down on a bicolored light and it gives you the ability to match your color temperature with a color meter to whatever light's coming through the window or in the room or situation you're in. They also draw very little power. Uh, strobes can draw a lot more power when they surge as they pull to charge. Uh, LEDs draw such little power, there's really no problem using them anytime you're in a home or anywhere else, there's no circuit issue at all. If you want to have wide open, shallow depth of field, then using LEDs helps you accomplish that. This kind of leads me into some of the downfalls or the drawbacks of using continuous lights. And the number one drawback is that they are not super powerful, and so you're not going to get F8, F11, F16. You're never going to see that with a continuous light source you're going to get a much lower power, which means you're going to have to shoot much, much more wide open. Also, you don't freeze action. You're not going to freeze people moving or jumping. They're really built on the principle that you're going to blur frame to frame when you're shooting video. And so when you're doing stills, 50 of a second is fine. And you'll be able to get portraits if people aren't jumping around. But if people start to move too much or when they're talking, if you're doing a fashion kinds of shoot where they're jumping and moving all the time, you're going to get blurs on every single uh, image. Another issue is you really have to use a tripod when you're using LEDs because if you're going to shoot those longer exposures, you're going to have to be on a tripod. So it makes it a little less easy to move around. A lot of LEDs are difficult to modify. Now the Silk 210s have grids that just, you know, they have a magnet, pop them on the front, that's fabulous and it really controls the amount of light that they give out. But if you want to put a softbox in things, it becomes a little more difficult for some LEDs. A bayoneted mount LED, and there's a lot of them starting to come out in the market there, allow you to put your softboxes and things and overcome a lot of that issue. And let's take a look at some of the images we got of Juan Pablo. It's just a fabulous shot, so let's take a look at those. We're now going to do some two shots with Juan Pablo and Ariana Savalas. We're going to put them together in this kind of son of the chic, tight embrace, just fabulous images. One of the reasons I chose LEDs for this shot is I do like the little bit harder look you can get with LEDs. It's a very directional source and it just gives you that kind of uh, that look, that film noir. We're going back to the 20s when the, the look was a little harsher. You can soften them and they look absolutely fine, but I just like the look. I like the direction. I like to be able to see that and be able to recreate those portraits. So it felt like the right choice as we go back to that era to use a light that more imitates that, not that LED flat panels were around in the 1920s, but uh, more of that hard directional light. I think that looks fabulous. So all in all, there are some great reasons to use LEDs as a portrait process, but it's not a perfect process as all things in this industry are. So take a look at the pros and cons and see if using LEDs is right for you when you're doing your portraits. So keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking.
It's July and time for a new giveaway. We've got three prizes from Vanguard. Tripod, the 263 Carbon. We've got an Alta Sky 45 and a VO tripod. So get to thesunlens.com, sign up, three lucky winners. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. And while I'm doing my close-up, why don't you subscribe to The Slanted Lens? And then you can do your close-up too.